So what have you learned in those successful clubs um, that you've been a part of? Um, is there common trends um, from, from different leagues that you see to win that ultimate silverware? I think, I think for me, the thing that I've seen um, that really sort of sticks with me now is that you have to have everyone on the same page. Um, so communication is obviously crucial. We talk about it all the time, about being on the same page and what that looks like. But it, I find that it's actually quite quite hard to achieve. So um, it needs to be it needs to be from everyone. So not only the head coach, the assistant coaches, or the SNC. Uh, this it includes the medical and the people behind the scenes and whoever else is involved with the club that they all share the same ideas and vision about where the club's going and how uh, how the club should be viewed by from the outside in by other people for the role that you're in um for those that aren't aware what would be some of your key focuses or big rocks if you like from a daily point of view or even maybe from a weekly point of view yep so um the age group that i'm working with at the moment is under 23s and under 21s so um if you look at sort of the that LTAD sort of frameworks and and all that sort of thing. Basically, these guys are mostly 17 and over. So when you look at that sort of age group, they're sort of looking more towards the the more developed um, the more developed side of the juniors um, mm-hmm. or elite youth athletes. So they've sort of gone through their peak height velocity. They've they've gone through puberty. They've started to develop some some muscle mass. Um, and basically, they're at a point where they can actually be pretty safely loaded in a variety of different stimulus. So, um, for me, the big rocks um, is making sure that they're hitting their their strength sessions every week. Um, we have two strength sessions a week for these guys. Um, we have more in preseason. And and when you're new to a, a club, what, what are some of your most effective ways, or, or I guess advice for SNCs going into a development role to um, gain buy-in uh, from the athletes? So your program can be yeah most effective. I think um, I think it might depend on the sport as well. But if you're working in soccer, for me a big thing that um, players really enjoy and coaches actually are quite fond of it as well is that you're you're able to sort of um, include more football specific stuff within whatever development stuff that you're doing. So whether that's including a, a passing drill, a passing component, or a dribbling component, or something with the ball. Um, just to show that you're getting a little bit more technical aspect of um, of the sport involved in what you're doing as well. So it's not just all about, um, I guess, S&C. Uh, I think that could be really helpful to get guys on board in terms of buying into the program and what you're doing. Do you think there's a place for it in Australian rules football? Well, obviously, you've worked in the VFL where basically there's NAB League and then uh, if you don't get drafted, you, you play State League. Do you think there's a place for yeah, an under-23 league in Australia's football, and, and if so, what are some of the benefits? It's a good question. Um, I don't know how it would work. I think I think there's definitely there could be some benefits to it for sure. Um, I know there's there's you know there's the next gen academies for some clubs that have sort of younger age groups coming all the way up. Um, but I think I think the the beauty of it of the VFL is that you know these guys that might be first year or, or sort of not breaking into the to the AFL squads. Um, they get to play in the VFL against against men, against um, really really good quality athletes, um, and that's where most of the development's going to occur. So, I think the setup is is almost quite similar in the sense that um, our academy boys will play against uh, senior men's teams as well. So we're playing against senior men's teams in the MPL two at the moment. Some common ones that perhaps uh, S and Cs could listen to this podcast and uh, prevent from. Uh, hearing from your advice and, and what are some common solutions to try and prevent making those mistakes with uh, academy programs? Um, I think for younger athletes, uh, especially ones that are sort of seemingly pretty well developed physically already, um, it's important not to go not to go too crazy with those guys. Um, the, I guess the rate of maturation and things like that and you know, players in different age groups and different um, sort of growing at different rates. That you, you know, you're gonna you're gonna see all sorts of different issues that come up with um, with ath- with youth athletes um, playing sport and the and the medical issues that might be involved with that. Um, so lots of overuse injuries, lots of um, shin splints and Osgood slatters and, and all sorts of hip um, issues going on. 
I think the best thing is to make sure that you get them um, to get them training really consistently first. Uh, so they're not just really ad hoc when they're, when they are doing their gym based training.